today on an all-new Dr. Phil, a volatile daughter. My life is at risk because she will kill me. I don't know where you came up with that. But will mom listen? You're doing all the talking, so you must have all the answers. To Dr. Phil's advice. I just want to make sure that you're aware of what's going on. I saw the videos. I saw her attacking people in the hotel. She went off like this, Doc. I'm going to die, not you, because you're going to be in Las Vegas while she's home killing me. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. You've never had anybody working harder to bring you to the threshold of change than right now. Yesterday, we met Donna, who says her daughter, Brittany, is violent, unpredictable, and holds the entire household hostage with her rages. Brittany says she is just the scapegoat, and the real problem is her mother, Donna. And Brittany's father, Stephen, admits that at first, he didn't believe his ex-wife's claims. That is, until Brittany moved in with him, and he found himself on the receiving end of her temper. Brittany says she's an angel but some shocking surveillance video footage received from the hotel tells a very different story. Take a look at what happened yesterday. My 28-year-old daughter, Brittany, is very violent. I'll go to jail for killing you. She is definitely a ticking time bomb. I will. If someone says something to her that she doesn't like, she will attack. My daughter is living with me because she cannot keep a job, cannot keep friends. I feel like I'm living with the enemy. I absolutely want this drama out of my house and out of my life. This is a 28-year-old adult. Tell me why you allow someone that threatens you to live in your home. I'm in fear for my life. She's going to hurt me. If she doesn't go home with you today, where is she going to go? If she comes back to me, Dr. Phil, we're dead. Well, I want to meet her. I want to get it on the record that there's nothing wrong with me. Not me, baby. There is no mental illness in this body. My mother is the problem. She eggs me on, and she fights with me. I want her out of my life. How are you doing today? I'm not good. What I need is to get out of her care and my father's care. They have mentally, verbally, emotionally, physically abused me since I was a child. You're saying you want away from her. I have to move on with my life. She says, if you don't stay with me, then you have to go to the hospital. Well, she can't put you in the hospital. You're an adult. Believe me, if she could be on her own, she would have been on her own. Are you God? Do you think you're God? Do you think you're the only person that can take me in their house? If you're going to do this, you don't need me. <laughs> Brittany spent the past 11 weeks with her father. That was not the best time of his life. Brittany is a Jekyll and Hyde. One minute peaceful and her loving and kissing, and then all of a sudden she'll go off. Brittany living with me was a whirlwind tornado. Police were called three times, and the third time is when she attacked me. The most difficult thing I've ever had to do in my life was live with my own daughter. Definitely has issues, major issues. No one attacks a mother in the middle of the hotel. The police are there, and then the ambulance did it. It's not normal. There was actually a surveillance video of the hotel because they sent it to me. Now you're reaching for it. Now uh, you're circling each other like boxers in the ring. She's backing up. You're attacking. You are being very aggressive. Your dad grabs you. Then security comes out, and now you're trying to kick security. She had the whole entire security against me. But She's controlling the movement. If your father had not restrained you and allowed you to attack that security guard, that's felony assault. What about her? She punched me in my lip. You can't control her. Only person you control is you. Here's what I want to know. What were you thinking and feeling when you were trying to hit or kick that security guard or those people down there? I felt in the room that she was manipulating me and um, spiritually abusing me. What do you mean? What, what are you saying? Like, um, yeah, you'll get married in a year. Or you'll, your father's just going to leave you in a hospital for the rest of your life. 
Um, oh, your hair looks nice today, but you're a fat ass tomorrow. I don't mean to butt in, now but that's, that, that now never that's happened. verbal. None of that ever happened. Now that's verbal. <clears throat> but perception is reality. And I think you are experiencing and living tortured with a lot of pain. And I, I think some of it may be real, and I think some of it is imagined and exaggerated and distorted. And I, I don't know why, but I think the reason I keep asking, what are you feeling when you're doing that, is because when you're that out of control, when you are attacking people, you have got to be terrified and in pain and like a cornered and tortured animal. Nobody just goes down and just starts lashing out and attacking everybody because they're a happy person. I am happy. Well, you weren't happy then. <laughs> but I do feel like a tormented child. So what has to happen is if you're going to get from where you are to where you want to be, that doesn't happen by leaping tall buildings in a single bound. That happens by making, a, a setting a goal and coming up with an action plan where we go step by step by step by step to get you from where you are now to where you want to be. Doctor, I got to interrupt. She, she, I heard a lot of things in her back. She cannot take care of you about where she's going to live. She can't take care of herself. To the reaction. No, she can't today, but no, what do you want to do? No, no, what, gonna, what is your plan? Be, my plan, she needs to be diagnosed. She's never been diagnosed. She's been put in, in and out of hospitals, Doc, and nobody's been ever able to put her on the right the drugs. I believe nobody could act natural, moment, hug and kiss me, and then go off like that yeah. and want to hurt I me. I just don't want well, to. Let me tell you, so let me tell you two things that you can write down and remember mm -hmm. me telling you this. Mm -hmm. Number one, you're not going to parent her through the police, and you're not going to fix this with a pill. Now, those thank two you. things, thank those you. two things you just thank need to you. understand. You cannot Hallelujah. parent your child through the police Hallelujah. by calling the cops every time something Hallelujah. gets out of control. He's the only one besides my grandmother. And, Hallelujah. And you're not going to fix this with a pill. There's more going <laughs> on than that. There's definitely something mental at this point going on. There's definitely there. something wrong. You've seen the video of her in the house. <coughs> there was no provoke. There was nothing. We were getting along. Dr. All Phil, of a sudden, she I went. I am in fear of my life. She went I off cannot. like this, Doc. Yeah. Yeah. This You've is, seen the video. This is not about blame. This is about finding I didn't solutions. Blame her. Yes, absolutely. This is, I'm not blaming you. Right. I'm not blaming absolutely. you as that parents. That was not a normal video of her attacking one attacking. I'm not blaming. I'm not blaming you. We are where we are. I'm about solutions, not about blame. Right. What has happened has happened. Right. Exactly. The question is, what are we going to do about it now? Do I think we can just go rent an apartment and put her in there and everything's going to be just fine? Hell no. I, I mean, I'm not an idiot. Thank you. I mean, seriously, do you think that I'm that naive? No. no, no Thank no. you. But this no. was a discussion that her father was having, an idea that well, she could do that, and that can, yeah, well, cannot happen. Yeah, you better get a short-term lease if you do, because that's not well, going to last that very long. We tried that a year ago. She was in the apartment for 15 days and was on the middle of the street drinking drunk. Whatever the reason, you agree it didn't work, or you'd still be there, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. All right, look, Donna was so <laughs> concerned about her youngest daughter's safety that she helped move Brianna into an apartment to get away. We'll talk about that and add Brianna to the conversation when we come back. Brittany definitely acts like a bully in my house. Brittany likes to pretend like she's a tough girl that's in the mob. She likes everyone to feel like they need to be afraid of her. I'm the mafia. My father's the mafia. She has no connections to the mob or the mafia. It's all in her head. Brittany says she has no relationship with her younger half-sister, Brianna, and that it's just Brianna's loss. But Brianna says she can't be around her big sister because Brittany can go from zero to 60 in the blink of an eye. Take a look. Brittany is very violent, loud, aggressive. I told you to put her in her place, and you keep letting her open her mouth. Brittany definitely acts like a bully in my house. Brittany has an explosive personality, and she's really hard to get along with. 
I have no relationship with Brittany at all. I basically try to avoid her at all costs. Any conversation that I have with her ever is always a fight. It's like she's taking it to an extreme extent where she's saying things to trigger you. If you push me to the limit and you keep letting her disrespect me, I'm not afraid of jail. And she'll look at me and she'll be like, you're ugly. If you don't walk away from her, she will talk about how she's going to punch you, stab you. She'll go to jail because she's going to hurt you. Every night, I lock my room because she has made threats about knives, and I don't trust it. Brittany likes to pretend like she's a tough girl that's in the mob. She likes everyone to feel like they need to be afraid of her. I'm the mafia. My father's the mafia. She has no connections to the mob or the mafia. It's all in her head. She has abused the animals in our house. With our dog, she wanted to give him a haircut, and she cut his hair down to his skin on his back. She threw mascara in the fish tank. She threw, like, yarn in the fish tank. I don't know why she would do it. I think that Brittany probably has impulse control issues. You bully. Double bitch. Brittany treats my mom the worst because my mom is the main person who gives her attention. My mom is the one who's there trying to help her, and then she abuses her for it. My worst fear is that Brittany could kill someone in my family. I'm innocent. I'm an angel. I'm a saint. I'm a saint. All right, well, joining us now via Polycom is Brianna. So, Brianna, you've been listening to what we've been talking about. Uh, what do you have to add that we haven't mentioned so far she is putting on a very controlled personality right now she's immature and, i agree um and then she says things like that i'm immature um basically you know nothing about the you know nothing about the mob you know nothing about the term mafia I don't even know where you came up with that. You don't even speak to me. We don't even have a two-word conversation. You are my half-sister. So my father's side of the family, which is really none of your business, is connected to the mob. I've never mentioned it to you. It's something that we don't talk about, and it's really none of your business, and you should not be talking about it. Why don't you focus on some things that you have, that you scream at mommy, that you have no class and respect for yourself, that you sleep around with guys and come home at all hours of the night while I have been religious and I go to church and I pray for you? Why don't you focus on the good things that I've protected you your whole life? So basically, this is her favorite thing to do. She makes things up about me when I say something she doesn't like. Okay, well, I want to add someone to the conversation right now. And this is uh, a really good friend and world-renowned life coach, Mike Baer. Now, Mike is the author of a book called Best Self, Be You, Only Better. In fact, it is a New York Times bestseller. Mike, if you will, jo join us up here. I consider him the best at helping people maximize their true potential. By the way, congratulations on Best Self, because it hit the New York Times Thank bestseller you. list. Yes. And it's been on there, burning up the charts for weeks and weeks now. And they're now taking this into schools throughout the country, uh, into public schools, private schools, working with kids uh, and their parents in uh, using the concepts in Best Self. And, and this is the first time in a long time that I've seen uh, the, the school system so hungrily go after a book for both kids and adults. So congratulations on how that's been uh, embraced. I actually asked Coach Mike to come and get involved yesterday and start working with Brittany yesterday and talking to her and gathering some information, putting some data together. And so you did that yesterday, right? The two of us sat down and I, uh, we got to know each other. What is best self? What is anti-self? So um, best self is about being your authentic self, the best version of yourself, uh, the part of yourself that doesn't get triggered, that is loving, that is caring, that is fearless, um, that is really who somebody is at their core. Being who they want to be, who they're meant to be. Right, being their true self, which I believe everyone has a best self, and they also have what we call an anti-self. All right, and define anti-self. An anti-self is the part of you that gets triggered, and I find that if we just say, for example, to somebody, don't be angry, 
um, it's you notice people don't really change. They're like, okay, I'll try my best not to be angry. I find if you really give it a life of its own, you give it a character, you describe it, you know when it's triggered, you know when it comes out. We all have anti-self, we all have a best self, and so that's the exercise I did with Brittany. So yesterday they sat down. How did Brittany respond to meeting my friend and life coach Mike Bear, and how did she answer some questions? We'll see if she was willing to get real when we come back. You don't know what I've been going through. She needs more than coaching. Donna, let him finish, please. I don't need you to tell me. Let him Seriously? finish. This is the situation. My life is at risk. I'm going to die, not you, because you're going to be in Las Vegas while she's home killing me. Brittany has very bizarre sleeping habits. She'll wake up, stay up all day. All of a sudden, she's still up 3 o'clock in the morning. And now it goes into the next day. So now she's on 72 hours with no sleep. She is really sleep deprived. And it's always at night that she's up. If she gets any sleep at all, it's during the day. A lot of times, she'll get loud because she's up and she wants me to be up. So she wants to disturb the house. I really believe that the lack of sleep is making her go crazy. Now, Brittany says her mom has been telling her for years that she needs to talk to me, and she wasn't happy about coming here. I hope she'll be happy by the time she leaves. But I decided to actually add some help to this and get an early start. So I asked Brittany to sit down with my friend and world-renowned life coach, Mike Baer. He's the author of the New York Times bestseller, Best Self, Be You, Only Better. Let's look at Mike's conversation with Brittany that took place yesterday. Hey, Brittany. I'm uh, Coach Mike. Hi, how are you? So to start things off, to get to know you, I wanted to know, who are you at your best? Happy. OK. Outgoing. Energetic. Positive. Mm-hmm. Adventurous. Mm-hmm. What I want you to do is I want you to draw what that part of you looks like. That's me at my best self. So we have Poppy. What Poppy's my, my, my dead grandfather. OK. And that's when you feel the most strength, or? I feel the most powerful. This is what we call your anti-self. I want you to draw it. Angel kitten mm -hmm. is your anti self. Mm -hmm. Tell me, why is it an angel if it's the part of you that's? Angry? Well, I'm always an angel. Well, you want me to say I'm the devil? No, I don't think it's devil. I, we all have best selves and anti selves. This isn't personal to you. This is everyone. We all have aspects of ourselves that are who we truly are. Okay, I'm not. Hundreds. I'm not an angel. I've never had someone label their anti self as an angel, ever. All right, we'll label it as. Um... The demonic Brittany. Sure. This is just a part of you that you want to really start to alleviate so you can go get a job, go get a man. So what are some goals for you? Do you want to get married? Yeah. You don't want to be living with your mom right now. If you're being totally honest with yourself, would the ideal goal be not to work and to find a man who was working a lot? To take care of To me. take care of you. Yeah. That's what you want. Yeah. You want to be taken care of. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate your honesty. You don't want to work. That's why you don't have a job. Mm -hmm. And you, unfortunately, are being taken care of by the people that you don't want to be taken care of. Yeah. And if Poppy were around, you would say, hey, it's time to get out of mom's house from 8 to 5. And that's codependency. You're dependent on the very thing that's not making you happy. It's a ball and chain. The first step is getting a job. You're capable of taking care of yourself. You are. I have to, or I'm going to die. Right. So, I think I'm going to end up dead. So we're going to set a plan. I want my life back, and I need as much help as I can get. We'll get you there, all right? I feel that she needs more than a life coach because she's catatonic when she's in the house. When she's off medicine, it's just not about just coaching. Well, if she... I could chime in, I think uh, she needs a mother 
who takes care of herself mm -hmm. and who doesn't enable. It's not I don't, not that. You, you haven't lived with me. You don't know what I've been going through for the last eight years. My daughter has mental issues. There are things, it's not only the triggers, it's other things that she does. She turns things upside down. She, she does certain things. She draws on the walls. There's things that I are going on that are mental. My daughter needs mental help. It's but not notice, just but about hold on, that. Real quick, so... I was working with Brittany. I, Hold on, I, I, Donna, I can I talk? I with someone I, I that's going to kill me. I got you. Because she will kill me. But She's I'm already getting, tried. I'm getting irritable just by how you're talking about her. Like, it's actually causing me anxiety. No, no, hold on. It. It, doesn't, it doesn't matter. I'm just okay. telling you. It causes, like, because the tension. Because I'm here. It took me so long to get here to get my daughter help. This is about her mental state. But this you're is not about helping her, me. They're her trying physical to help and mental me. state. This is not only about coaching let, let him her. Finish. She needs more than coaching. Donna, let him finish, please. You're not listening to him. He's telling you you're getting. Hey, I don't need let, you to tell me. Let him Seriously? finish. This is the situation. Let him finish. It's about her. If it's okay. about her, then let him finish. Zita. Yeah, uh, Zita. Yeah, okay. Okay. Thanks, Michael. So, where I don't what the meant, but it worked. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it meant stuff to eat, but you said it wrong. At, my life is at risk. I'm uh, going to die, not you, because you're going to be in Las Vegas while she's home killing me. She has gone for jobs. She has I'd tried. I'd be curious what she says about her job interview, not you. And Brittany's not going to tell you the truth. You're doing all the talking, so if you've got this figured out, then why is this in the ditch? Closed captioning provided by... Mike. Ooh. <laughs> it's, it's intense. Yeah, you should live it. You'd see. So, so I think from working with Brittany, what I noticed was at a certain point, I started to see a little bit of a light turn on. I felt like we started to have a connection. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. And to me, what's happening right now is, look, she needs to make some attempts. She needs to take some actions towards getting to a goal of being independent. Like, she can't live in the house if she's not out looking for a job. She may not keep a job, you know, I've, it's, but you keep making attempts. Right now, we're just stuck. And I, Brittany has the power to make some changes in her life. When Brittany has made an attempt to go for a job, she's walked into a beauty salon and she has said to the woman, I'm here for a job. When the woman says to her, well, what can you do? Well, I could, I could wash hair, you know, but I could turn the chair around and I can pick up the soap and I'll, I'll do things. I'll sweep. I'll, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll put the apron on. I know how to do it. I can turn, she says bizarre things so they don't hire her. She has gone for jobs. She has I'd tried. I'd be curious what she says about her job interview, not you. Well, I, I'm the one that witnesses it, and Brittany's not going to tell you the truth. She's not going to be honest with you. And quite frankly, I'm living it, and I need help for my daughter. She has gone for job interviews, and people, okay. she has scared people off. Right, can I ask a question here? If you're doing all the talking, so you must have all the answers. So if you've got this figured out, then why is this in the ditch? The thing that I have figured out is that there's a problem with my daughter, and yeah. that problem is going to lead to her killing me, or my daughter, or my husband, or our animals. Something drastic's going to happen. My daughter's going to go to jail, and our lives are going to be over, and it's going to be a tragic situation. And that's okay. the only thing that I can tell you that I know. Okay, and so... <clears throat> What is it that you're frustrated about? Well, I just feel at this point that there's a life coach, which is not... You don't have the first idea what the hell I'm thinking or what I'm going to do. Uh, you're right. All I you're don't. doing is running right. off at the mouth because instead I'm, of listening. Because I'm afraid, Dr. Phil. I'm afraid. Yeah. Well, you're long on mouth and short on ears. Okay. Well, I'm, I am in fear of my life. Very fair. But you, you, you can't... I, I, I'm spending time you telling me that there's just no hope for her. Is that what you're telling me? No, I'm telling you that I want, I know that you can help her. Well, apparently you don't know that because you're too busy programming me to make sure that I do exactly what you think I need to do. No, I just want to make sure that you're aware of really what's going on. Like the, 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 he's, just the desperateness of he's it. The, he's the pro, he knows. 
He doesn't need to. He doesn't need. Oh he my knows, God, he reads this guy right keeps butting in. Now I keep butting in because you keep talking. He knows exactly what's this going on. This is the problem between but me you and you. Gotta, you got to see him, need, but you keep I'm talking, talking too to much him, but I don't need you. This yeah, well, is you the two, reason why I divorced look, you, you. You two can... I don't want to. I, I, I just you, want you to be quiet. You two are wasting her time going back and forth. Now, you said there was good and bad yesterday with Mike. What was the bad? The bad is not having a stable relationship with mom, mm -hmm. um, becoming um, vital, saying those words that I don't want to say, right. um, feeling that she's uh, making me believe that she's God and she's all of, you know, she um, comes off so strong that it scares me I get enraged and I mm -hmm. want to attack her because I feel cornered. I feel that she's like, oh my God, like suffocating me. Like mm -hmm. my life is over. That's it. You, 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 you're, you're, you're going away. I can't take you. And mm -hmm. just like tossing me, tossing mm -hmm. me to nothing. All right. Well, it's time for me to weigh in. So. What all needs to happen if we're going to get from where we are to somewhere that can be a productive life? Because right now, the life expectancy is somewhere between 80 and 90. So that means you got 50, 60 years left. So what are we going to do with all of this time? Uh, we're going to talk about that when we come back. Closed captioning provided by... Okay, I'm gonna tell you exactly what I think needs to happen here and what I think is going on. And I wanna start by taking a look at these drawings that you did yesterday. When we look at the anti-self that you've put together over here, to me, this suggests that what you're saying is correct, that there's something here that's not right because this drawing suggests to me a real lack of the ability to focus and organize thoughts in um, any kind of, of pattern that makes sense because you know we're here and then here and here and here and here and then these things are very unrelated rather than having an image, whereas here, when she was talking about the positive, and I'm not talking about artistic ability, which I have none, this is a much more focused drawing. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, if I can go over the top of your drawing, this actually uh, looks very much like a heart. Uh, and then she has a positive representation of her grandfather here, and then this is a very happy symbol here. This is a very hopeful symbol here. Uh, so this is a, a very positive image that she's drawn here. When she gets into her anti-self, uh, it's much more Picasso-like. I mean, there's all different elements. They're not related uh, in different ways. Now, these are eyes, of course, and then this is the nose and, and mouth, so there's definitely some organization, but this tells me neurologically that there is a lack of focus here. And oftentimes when you see behavior that she has the inability to inhibit, that tells me that there's very likely a disruption of the neurotransmitters in your brain at this point. Now, uh, you were beaten severely, and at that point, there might very well have been some neurological disruption uh, at that point, and we don't really know, and nobody has really taken a careful look to see what's gone on. And this suggests to me uh, a disorganization in the neocortex, which deals with the organizational, the executive functioning of the brain. And then some of these other elements suggest that the limbic system, the emotional part of the brain, is involved as well. So 
my suggestion <clears throat> is going to be multifaceted here. I, I want to have you diagnosed and examined from the tip of your head to the tip of your toes with a particular with a particular look at your brain function by doing a brain scan and see what's going on there. And I'm not talking about anything invasive, no dyes injected, nothing with the technology today is such that we can look and see if certain parts of your brain have gone dark, certain parts of your brain are overactive. There are all sort of things we can do to find out what's happening. And to do that, I'm, I'm going to recommend that we send you to uh, the PNP Center in Dallas, Texas, which I think is the top diagnostic center in the country, and have you spend a few days there getting evaluated by a multidisciplinary team of experts uh, to evaluate you and give you the feedback. You're an adult. You'll get the feedback. If you want to share it with your parents, you can. If you don't, that's up to you but get you the information and from that come up with a plan. And I do think whatever that plan is that you would benefit greatly from having a life coach. Now that may go along with other types of professionals that are helping, but she needs help in setting some career goals, creating a resume, identifying the steps to get from where she is to the next level, to the next level, to the next level. Somebody that she can work with and begin to set and achieve some goals in a stepwise fashion. And everybody's saying, well, she went in there and played the role. He didn't get to see the real her. No, I saw the videos. I saw her standing out in front of the house saying, I'm going to murder you tonight. I saw her attacking people in the hotel. And the fact that she kept it together here and role played being a rational human being while she was here, good for you. Good for you doing that. I mean, um, <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe you think I would have been more enlightened if she had attacked you in front of me or me in front of you. But the fact that she stayed under control and rational while she was here made I the most here. out of this time. <laughs> That's right. You showed up and you made the most out of it. So my suggestion is that we get you evaluated in detail by a multidisciplinary team and find out what is out of balance uh, with you. That goes on a to-do list. Uh, Mike, can you use CAST centers and their coaching system to get a life coach to work with her across time? We, and, we and, can, and we'll get you a coach who's focused on your passions and get you back into action in your life. And we're going to help you do it. And Mike and his coaches work with... They work with A-list celebrities from every walk of life, every walk of entertainment, and... So you're in the right place, life coach wise. Are you yeah. willing are you willing to participate in it? Yeah. With enthusiasm? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. And by the way, everyone in the audience is going home with your own copy of Best Self. You can get Mike Bear's book at Walmart and Walmart.com. Coming up, how a legendary performer's fall on stage led to a Grammy winning song. We'll hear her remarkable story of survival when she joins me next. Closed captioning provided by... Now, if you've ever hung out in a karaoke bar or a dance club or just remember the disco era of the 70s, then you definitely know this classic Grammy-winning song. Can you name this tune? All right, who can name this tune? What is it? I Will Survive, All Gloria right. Gaynor. By who? Gloria Gaynor. Gloria Ga well, the first one got it, of course. Yeah. That's I Will Survive, and it's sung by disco diva Gloria Gaynor. The song hit number one on the Billboard charts in 1979, sold over 14 million copies worldwide. Gloria won her Grammy in 1980. And she has a new album coming out this year. In fact, I Will Survive really described Gloria's life as she has struggled with osteoarthritis that nearly crippled her for years. Take a look. La, la. 
suffer with uh, osteoarthritis. It affects me mentally because I know that I can't do the things that I used to do. The pain is excruciating, debilitating. It makes you feel older than you are. In the beginning, I started feeling pain in my knees, like pins and needles. I would avoid stairs like the plague. Eventually, I had to go and seek medical help for it. The doctor said, it's osteoarthritis. You will have to have your knees replaced. This one was done twice. So now I have two titanium knees. To finally have the surgery on my knees was the best thing I could have done. Going up and down stairs is still painful to an extent, nothing like it was before. I'm living with osteoarthritis, emphasis on living. The words, oh no, not I, I will survive. I feel that I survived osteoarthritis and I would not let it stop me. Well, joining me to talk about osteoarthritis is my really good longtime friend, Pfizer's chief patient officer, Dr. Frida Lewis Hall. So, welcome. <laughs> and additionally, please welcome Grammy Award winning Miss Gloria Gaynor. <laughs> well, Gloria, it's so good to see you. Thank you so much for being here to talk about how you continue to survive living with this osteoarthritis. Now, you were actually recovering from a horrible fall when you received the song, I Will Survive, right? Right. Now, you had that fall in 1978, but you mm -hmm. were diagnosed with osteoarthritis in both knees in 1985, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then also in your spine 12 years later. Mm -hmm. Listen, I will survive for, <laughs> for certain. With 12 rods in my back, I'm feeling great and um, I'm good to go. So Dr. Frieda, tell everybody so they know, what exactly is osteoarthritis? How common is it? Osteoarthritis is a form of degenerative joint disease and it is the most common form of arthritis that we see. And we often refer to it as OA. Osteoarthritis occurs when the cartilage, that flexible, a tissue that covers and protects bones to prevent them from rubbing against each other becomes damaged or deteriorated. And again, we don't know exactly the cause, and it can develop gradually over time as people age. Well, other than getting older, are there other risk factors associated with developing osteoarthritis? Other risk factors include joint damage or joint injury or overuse, and this can be related to sports or to repetitive physical labor. The other is obesity and weight gain. That increased weight puts greater pressure on joints, particularly those knees. Um, and another risk factor is genetics. And last but not least is uh, gender. Over the age of 55, it's more common in women. For someone like Gloria, who's already living with the disease, what can they do to ease the pain, to ease the discomfort? First, healthy diet and uh, healthy body weight, as well as routine, moderate exercise. These can help uh, perhaps slow down the development of the disease. As for treatments, there are a range of treatment options, and your healthcare team seems to have mm. really worked hard with you because they can help sort through the options. But the options to help manage symptoms can include things like physical therapy, pain and anti-inflammatory medications, assistive devices, mm -hmm. and then of course, in very severe cases like yours, mm. surgery can become necessary. Does your osteoarthritis give you problems? Is it worse sometimes more than others? Well, on cold days or rainy days, it affects your joints. But, um, you know, I, I, music is my life. I'm not about to let osteoarthritis yeah. stop me <laughs> yeah. or even slow me down. Yeah. Yeah. I do the things that you suggest. Um, I exercise, I do my physical therapy. And I think you've proven a further point, which is with the right care and the right attitude, mm -hmm. you can not only survive, but you can thrive. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. If you or someone you know has osteoarthritis, you can go to gethealthystayhealthy.com, and there's so much information there about OA, so gethealthystayhealthy.com is where you want to go. And of course, while you're there, you can sign up for a monthly newsletter. I want to thank all of my guests today, and especially Dr. Frida Lewis-Hall and...
Gloria Gaynor. And uh, if you have an issue or problem in your life that you would like my help with, I'm here and I want to hear from you. So just go to drphil.com. You can email me. And also don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Twitter. Check us out on Facebook too. And be sure to subscribe to my podcast called Fill in the Blanks. The podcast is free, so join me at Fill in the Blanks. Now, one last question. New album is when? Is in May. Is in May. It's my gospel album called Testimony. We cannot wait for that. All right, we'll see you next time.